Okay, according to the data shown below, which would be the best prediction of the number of passengers at the International Jet Port for the year 2008? So we've got, we, let's examine the data we're given. We have 1980, 1985, 1990, 1995, and 2000. I think the best way to do this, well, there's, there's a couple of easy ways to do it. If you notice here, we have an X value and a Y value. We still have ordered pairs. And the easiest way to do this problem is if you can write an equation that represents the relationship between these X and Y values. Again, I could show you how to have your calculator give you the exact equation and plug in those values to find that. I do think that there are more steps required um, in using the calculator solely for this problem, but let's give it a shot anyway. So what I want to do is I want to take my XY values and plug it into my calculator. And the way I do that is I hit the key STAT. And then hit enter. And so now what I have is I have L1, L2, L3, and so forth and so on. Where L1 is your X values and L2 are your Y values. So let's plug each one of these values in. Plug in all my X's. Enter. After you plug in each value, hit enter after each one, and you can go to the next one. Oops. Now my Y values, So, after you enter those in, just go back and double check and let's make sure we entered in everything correct because I'd hate to do all this work and make a mistake in inputting one of my values wrong. Looks like everything's good. Okay, once you have everything entered in, we want to look at the scatter plot that these points create. So we have to do two things. First of all, we have to turn on our scatter plot. The way we do that is second y equals and we'll see that they're all turned off we just want to turn one of them on so hit enter on one of them and just hit enter on on and it's on so basically hit enter two times that turns on our scatter plot the next thing that we need to do is we need to adjust our window. Go to Window, so the key I hit is Window, and I want to look at my values. The lowest value I have for my X's is 1980. That's my minimum. The highest value for my X's is 2000. That's my max. But remember, we're going to be looking for the year 2008. So let's include 2008 in our max. So let's say 2008 is our max. Now, before I actually put 
1980 for my minimum for my x values and 2000 for my maximum for my x values. I have to remember what I'm doing. I'm creating a window. So instead of putting in 2008 for my max and 1980 for my min, let's give ourselves a little cushion. And for my x minimum, let's do maybe 1950. And for my x maximum, let's do maybe 2030. That gives us some cushion on each side to see. Always leave your x scale at 1 and your y scale at 1. Now let's look at our y values. Our smallest value or our y minimum is 30.6. So let's say our y minimum is going to be a little bit smaller than that. Let's just put it at maybe 15. And you don't have to be exact when you're doing these values. You just want to give yourself a little bit of cushion. And you can always go back and readjust your window when you're finished. Let's make our y max maybe 75. So now we hit graph. And the key to looking at the scatter plot, the reason why we want to look at the scatter plot is to see what kind of function it looks like we're dealing with here. Are we dealing with a straight line, a linear function? Are we dealing with a quadratic, something that looks like a parabola, and so forth? Well, here we're obviously dealing with a straight line. And so this is what I need to know. So the way I write my equation with a straight line, first of all, recall that we have y equals mx plus b is our equation for the linear line in slope-intercept form, where m is our slope and b is our y-intercept. The calculator is just a little bit different than that. The calculator is going to have, instead of mx plus b, it'll have ax plus b, where a now will be my slope, and b is still my y-intercept. So the way I do this is, and I know I'm running out of room here, so what I want to do to get there is I want to give myself a little more room here. I want to go back to stat scroll right to calc and we decided we had a line so if you look at choice 4 it's linear regression AX plus B that's what we're looking for 4 and hit enter and it tells me that my equation now is for y equals ax plus b, a is 1.578, b is negative 3093.8. So my equation is y equals 1.578x minus 3093.8. Now I'm almost done and I know this seems like a lot of work I just want to show you exactly what this calculator is capable of if you learn how to use it correctly. Take my equation go back to y equals and enter it in there. Now, once I have this, I want to go to second, trace, and that's going to bring up all of these different choices. I want to choose value because, see, what I want to know, what I'm looking for here is what is y going to be when x is 2008? So, hit 1 for value, and it's going to graph it, show you that nice little line that your equation brought right through those ordered pairs that you recorded in there, which shows you it's a great fit to those ordered pairs, the function that we chose. And it says x equals, okay, well x equals 2008, hit enter, oh, and y is 74.824 C. So I hope this helped. I know that the last problem specifically had a lot of calculator steps. Take notes, view the podcast whenever you'd like. 
get good at it and this calculator can really give you some answers to some questions on the test that maybe you wouldn't have been able to do but without it it could mean the difference in passing or not passing it could also the calculator could also mean the difference in maybe making yourself commended